Mr. President, sit down. Yes, sir. Call me Mr. Shepard for now. Get used to keeping up appearances. Yes, Mr. Shepard. Everything I'm about to tell you is going to seem very strange. Yet, consider the source. You know what I say is true. Yes, I, I know. Then listen carefully. Your real education begins right now. Because you live during a time of abundance, the general populace has not been a major concern for you. You've had it pretty good. Well, that's about to change. Historically, the elites had to concern themselves with how to keep the people satiated. The people don't even have to be happy, really. As long as they have just enough to lose, they won't fight you. They won't risk it. If you go too far, however, if you get too greedy, too fast, expect a revolution. But why not just maintain abundance for everyone rather than risk a revolution? Because revolution is eventually where we want to take them, as long as we have control over it. But that can't happen if we're hasty, so take it slow. Never leap into atrocity, ease into it. Give the people time to acclimate to audacity. What they once thought intolerable will become the new status quo. If someone dares to complain, turn their own narrative against them and declare that they are the one who is being outrageous and even treasonous. You don't just jump to executions. Establish a bureaucracy. Start with surveillance. Move to detainment imprisonment, forced labor, torture, call it enhanced interrogation, and eventually executions. By then, they'll be used to cruelty. They'll partake in cruelty. And at every step of the way, you're rewriting history and you're shifting blame. How can I possibly do this? What the average person is capable of would shock you. You may think it impossible to convince people of certain things, but if you repeat something enough with force and confidence, people will believe it. Keep it simple. We will create such an imbalance of power that it will become unsustainable, make no mistake. So eventually some people will have nothing left to lose and you will not be able to forestall revolution any longer. But worry not, if you do it right, the elite will still be safe because throughout every stage of our accumulation of power, there will also be a scapegoat. Oh, we don't want to do these things to you. We don't want to have to put cameras everywhere. We don't want to censor you or or monitor your communications, or, or put up checkpoints, or, or frisk you, or demand your papers, but you see, we must do it because of those people. Who? It doesn't matter who. Pick them and make them the enemy. Make it socially acceptable to openly hate them. Fear is a tool. Use it. We will be the protectors, the savior. You see, they will be the reason we need to be harsh with the promise that once they are defeated and we have total control, everything will finally go back to the good old days. But we're living in the good old days right now. Things have never been better. <laughs> People don't know that. They take everything for granted. Invent an existential crisis. Constantly reiterate how concerned everyone should be about it. Find your scapegoat and blame them. Constantly. First, you divide the people and then you tell them how much those other people cost them and owe them. Pick some groups and make it okay to hurt them by leading through example. Single them out.
concentrate on them, dehumanize them. When people see their leaders mistreating them, it will become acceptable, and others will follow suit. As long as it's just them and not everyone else, people will find safety in being against them. The more a person openly hates them, the more loyal that person will appear, and that person will find sanctuary in that loyalty. Standing up for the hated groups will carry great risks. Their defenders will be traitors. They will become part of the hated group, pariahs, and thus also okay to mistreat, moralize the violence, make it a necessity. If you do not hurt and kill the guilty, then the guilty will hurt and kill the innocent. So through pain and violence, you're actually doing a good thing. But people won't actually do this on my say, so will they? Uh, It's not you, it's the law. If you obey the law, you're good. But if you break the law, you're bad. We need to shift from corrective action to punitive action. If you don't want bad things to happen to you, then simply don't break the law. That will be the rationale. Revive our primal hunger for vengeance. Atrocities are not committed by people who think of themselves as evil. They're committed by perfectly normal people who think they're doing something good. The trick is to get them to that point with your propaganda. You need to find the people who will obey. Those who understand that laws can be unjust are the people we need to eliminate early or they will give us problems. We need people who confuse legality with morality. The people who respect the law so much that they follow it blindly, completely without discretion or compassion, will happily commit your atrocities, and they'll do it with a clean conscience for the rest of their days. They need only some dehumanization, and acclamation to cruelty through gradual escalation. Weed out the rebels. Make your word the law. Bureaucratize the cruelty. And the people will do your dirty work for you. me, Mr. President. Yes, come on in. You have that meeting with Mr. Shepard soon, and I was just making sure... Right, right. What what time was he supposed to be here? No, sir. You're supposed to go see him, remember? Oh, Shepard. Now I remember. Some sort of investor, right? Look, Lily, I'm awfully busy, and I'm sure the Shepard fellow understands that the president of the Global Federation can't just sir, snap to a... Do you trust me? Of course I do, Lily. You know I do with my life. Then we need to go see Mr. Shepard. It's a matter of global security. What's going on? Be straight with me. It's classified, and Shepard is the only one who's qualified to brief you, sir. And this guy fully checks out with the intel? Yes, sir, of course. You know I wouldn't be here otherwise. Hmm. Alrighty then. Have my transport ready. Yes, sir. Alrighty is. What on earth are you doing, Lily? Stand up. She's kneeling, Mr. President, because she knows who I am. Oh, um, Mr. Shep- Mr. Joseph Shepard, I presume. 
Quite the theatrics you have going on here. Yes, some have referred to me as a shepherd. You may refer to me as the Lord. <laughs> what exactly are you Lord of? Everything. Uh, sure. A skeptic, I see. Tell me, Mr. President, how well do you remember school? Oh, very well. As, as you can see, I've utilized... No, my... no, not your advanced degrees. I'm talking about primary school. How well do you remember the basics? Specifically, literature and history. Well, you're supposed to be the Lord. Why don't you tell me? You remember as well as anyone your age, but I find it useful to go through the motions of human communication. Not for my understanding, but for yours. What is this all of- what's the point of all of these questions? I thought you had a classified matter of global security to discuss. Oh, I do, Mr. President. That's exactly why you're here. You have an election coming soon, and your approval ratings are quite high. That is something we're going to need to adjust. I don't- I don't get it. Look, if my numbers are good, then what's the problem? What needs adjustment? The numbers, you see. I may need to run against you, and if that happens, I'm going to win. Because you are going to see to it that I win. <laughs> oh, really? And why am I going to do that? Think back to those literature and history classes, Mr. President. <sighs> Lily, get up now. Is this your idea of a joke? Specifically mythology. How well do you remember your mythology? This man lowered me here under false pretenses. Please detain him. Like gnats. How the hell did you do that? What do you want with me? I've been trying to tell you all this time. If you just relax and answer my questions, all will be clear much sooner than if you resist. Your mythology studies. Start talking. Now! Um, uh, demigods, Achilles, Dionysus, uh, Orion, prophets, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, Smith, uh, gods, Zeus, Poseidon, uh, Vishnu, Buddha, Yahweh, Zodash, uh, H406. I, I... Now we're finally getting acquainted. You're being serious? You're telling me you're a god? You know what they don't teach in history classes anymore? Long ago, for quite some time, people tried to get a certain holy book to be taught in public schools, specifically the Testaments, the Bible. The irony is that they could have easily gotten the Bible taught in public schools if they only stopped treating it like a religion first. Because when it was finally taught in the classroom, it was when it was categorized alongside the other classical mythologies, gods that are now nothing more than stories. But at one point, they were believed in quite passionately. What is taught as fiction today was once taught in earnest as fact. People killed and died for those gods. A great waste, for all those gods were just words breathed to life by the mouths of mere men. Except one. The one true god. You? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Who are you supposed to be? Zeus? Yahweh? H406? Indeed, I was known as Yahweh. Well, well, then what do you need me for? Can't you just snap your fingers and have what you want? Sure I could. But some people watch for that. And I wish for my power to remain largely unseen. So I prefer minimal supernatural intervention. Well, then prove to me that you're this god. <laughs> Ask your security. You could have used a kinetic weapon. I am not to be tested. Well, that's awfully convenient. What I do now is not for my convenience, but for yours. 
You really are a god. Normally I'd warn you that making a hologram of the president without my permission is a very serious crime. But you've already attacked my men, so... By all means, keep forcing my hand if you wish. What's, what's going on here? Where are we? You and only you know where we are. See? There you are, running. I exist beyond time, so I took you with me to see yourself 50 years ago. I know you remember this well. You sneaked out of the house in the middle of the night to see the lightning that flashed in the distance. You got lost in the woods. Alone and scared, you cried and ran for hours. When you finally found your home, everyone was still asleep, and you didn't want to get in trouble, so you told nobody, and nobody ever knew. This was a memory between only you and God himself. You feel the panic you felt then, lost in the dark woods. Well, you were lost. But now, you are found. You really are a god. Just as you told yourself, remember? Normally I'd warn you that making a hologram of the president without my permission... It, it wasn't a hologram. It was me all along. It was you, from the future. As clearly as I saw you then, as you saw yourself now. You will respect my wishes. But why would you need to be president? To save the lives of billions of people. And that's something I can't do? In this case, at this time, sadly, no. I must personally intervene. I understand that this is a lot to take in. I will give you some time to contemplate this. You may go now. But... I go. I will meet with you again in a week to let you know what must be done. My men. I'll take care of them. Now go. Yes, Lord. skin if you want to do this right. Are you completely devoid of empathy? Yes, I'm very sorry that the simulation stopped generating code for those two characters. Tragic, truly. Everyone here is so gullible. What do you expect? They see something they can't explain, so they fill the gap with whatever explanation an authority figure gives them. God. That's the history of this crappy little simulation, isn't it? People don't understand how something works, so they claim it's God, and everyone believes it until the problem is solved and they move on to the next gap. And then they fill that gap with God. And on and on it goes, never learning from history, never realizing how faith has such terrible credibility. But they did eventually learn they got away from all that, and here I am pulling them back, forcing them to regress. Because you have to, Jeffrey. It's a lie. But it's for the greater good. It's a moral lie. Think of it like... Think of it like lying to a Nazi and telling him that you're not hiding Jews. That lie is only moral because it's temporary until the Nazi can be defeated. The lie must be a means to an end, not the end itself. In the end, the Nazi 
must be defeated so that the lie is unnecessary. Our lie is a means to an end, Jeffrey. An end that will preserve our world. But it won't preserve theirs. They'll never know the truth, and a lie will take them to a place far worse than they've ever known. So be it. You know it still needs to be done, don't you? Yeah, I know. Good. Oh. <gasps>